Farm Kemata Station is on the edge of Doubtless Bay in the far north. It's 620 odd hectares with about 576 effective. So Rochelle and me moved up here in the year 2000. We used to farm a 450 hectare hill country block in Thai Happy before that. Um, Rochelle and I have three children. We have Gabriel, Ryan and Tegan. Um, Ryan and Tegan are still at secondary school. Gabriel's at university. Rochelle was a trained secondary school teacher and she was working doing that and now she's decided to do a career change and she's going into architectural designing so she's getting retrained in that at the moment. The farm was originally owned by my father-in-law Winston Matthews. When we first moved up here in 2000 I knew nothing about farming in Northland so we basically ran the farm the same as Winston had because he was a very good um, farmer a very conservative run farm. It was had 3,000 breeding ewes and 200 um, Hereford cows. All progeny was fattened and sold. Um, we ran the farm for a couple of years like that and we realised that we had a few problems. One was our summer growth rate is very unpredictable in this area. We do generally be dry summer and we found we were way overstocked in that dry summer. And the main reason for that was because we had so many breeding stock units. So we decided we needed to move out of so much breeding stock and into more trading stock. Our other major concern was with cattle set stocked in big paddocks, we were doing a tremendous amount of pugging damage in the winter. So they were the two drivers of us changing. We went and looked at a few good farmers in our area that were doing intensive beef systems and we started mucking around with those and we put in a couple of little systems and they worked very, very well, both in minimising pugging and increasing production. Then in 2004 we were um, invited to become a monitor farm and we started going down the road of intensive beef farming there. We put The first year we put two small technos in within the paddocks that we had and we immediately tripled our production just by putting the fences and water in. Um, it worked, as I said, it worked so well, we decided we'd rip the whole lot out, rip all the permanent paddocks out, and then started on, along the road putting in technos and also cell systems. At this stage, we have 370 odd hectares in techno and cells. We're putting in another 60 hectares this summer, and that will leave us another 60 hectares to do next year and by then we'll have 500 hectares in intensive beef systems and the remainder of the farm um, that isn't in that we will continue to run a few sheep on. Um, the main reason for that is we've got a par site on the farm which is quite culturally significant and we don't want to intensify that so we'll just run sheep on that. And there's another rough gully area that I think eventually will be intensified but at this stage we're doing a lot of poplar pole planting in that area to stabilise the land and I don't want to use put cattle in there at this stage until those trees are established. We were with the Beef and Land Monitor Farm for just over three years and then since then we've had numerous field days here um, which Beef and Lamb have, have sponsored highlighting what we've done to try and get it out into the wider community um, what we have achieved here on this farm because they are very significant production and profit gains to be had to replicate what we are doing. The increase in production and finances has actually been a byproduct of what we initially started out. Our main issue to start with was to try and minimise the pugging damage we were doing on this farm. And um, by putting the systems in, we've been able to not eliminate but definitely minimise the amount of pugging damage we are doing. And the byproduct of that is the increase in production that we're getting. The water is the most expensive part of this development. Um, the fencing is very cheap, it's about $100 a hectare, but the water ends up costing us about $300 a hectare to put in. Um, we use a lot of what we call micro troughs, and we also use what we call a hydrant, and then we shift a water trough with the cattle, and you plug the water trough into the hydrant to, to get water. Um, it is expensive, um, we've had to put in extra dams, 
all our water is pumped from the dams up to tanks on hills and then gravity fed from there. So it is an expense, but once again, the production gains far outweigh the cost of putting them in. I think probably one of the major concerns I have with the intensification is we're running a lot of R1 Frisian bulls and whether um, worm resistance becomes an issue, but in saying that we've discovered another two drugs that will help um, control those internal parasites and with the combination of those two drugs and the three that we already have, that gives us a multitude of, of tools to try and combat that. That would be my major concern with the intensification. Everything else I can see with the intensification is a plus. That would be my only concern would be the animal health side of it. Our production has gone from roughly about the 180 kilos of carcass weight per hectare to over 560 kilos of carcass weight per hectare. And that equates to our gross farm income going from slightly below the Northland average to now we're double the Northland average. Um, and that's purely as a result of intensifying the beef systems. The other big benefit that we've noticed is we've been building topsoil in areas of our farm that before didn't have a lot of topsoil on it. This country originally when it was broken in was very, very poor country. It only grew tea tree about two feet high. It had very low fertility and virtually no topsoil. And now we've got a good level of topsoil over most of our farm and it's increasing every year. I think it's important to build a network of support to run this business. This business is bigger than one person. You, you cannot be a specialist in everything. You need to have a um, very good lawyer accountant obviously, but you also need to have good farm advisors. You need to have good uh, veterinarian help with the animal health. You need to have good marketer for buying and selling your stock. So it's a team effort this farm. Um, obviously your staff as well, you need to have good staff members which we're very lucky that we've got. At this stage we've got myself and another full-time employee. We've just employed a third part-time employee. Um, but when there was just the two of us, if we haven't got all the cattle shifted by half past nine in the morning, and that's probably shifting eight or nine hundred head of cattle and probably 25, 30 mobs, something major has gone wrong. So we have a big focus on being very efficient. Um, there are two reasons for that. One is so you free up your day, obviously, but the main one is in winter, we've got to get those cattle shifted as soon as possible to try and minimise that pugging damage. Um, we've got to get grass into those animals so that they're contented. If, they, if they're hungry, they start walking, and that's when they do the pugging damage. The environment to us, both Rochelle and me, is extremely important. We've got a beautiful house site looking out over the Doubtless Bay, which is a beautiful bay. This bay brings a lot of money into our local community with people coming up here fishing. And so we're extremely conscious of trying to maintain the water quality in that bay. Um, so we have done a lot of work to try and minimise pugging as much as we can. We have done a lot of fencing to fence off our waterways, um, all trying to keep our water quality that goes into the local river that goes into the bay as clean as possible. I think it's a very, very important aspect that most farmers have to look at, um, particularly how bad the water quality is in, in a lot of New Zealand rivers and streams. Going forward, once we've gone through the next two years of doing the final intensifications on the farm, we're then going to start looking at trying to fine-tune how to run these systems and get more out of them. I think there's good potential to learn a lot from our dairy farming uh, cousins and uh, adapting some of the knowledge and, uh, that they've got into our systems. And we're very pleased that um, Beef and Lamb are funding a beef profit for pasture, which is, we're looking at different uh, doing research projects on different ideas and finding out which are economically viable and which aren't. And a lot of that stuff is coming from the dairy industry and what they're doing and adapting what they do to, to our systems. And I think we can squeeze a lot more out of these systems, um, particularly when you see the amount of grass dairy farmers can grow compared to us. I think we've got a lot to learn from them on how to do that. For our free time, we're very lucky, our whole family loves riding horses um, and we all rodeo apart from Rochelle, she, she rides horses but she doesn't compete at the rodeos. Um, 
both my daughters barrel race and team rope and my son and myself both team rope and rope and tie and we find it a great way of getting away from the farm and just getting some time out and some relaxation.